My name is Sylvia Hubbard and I am a romance suspense author of over 35 independently published books. I am founder of Motown Writers Network, an avid blogger of uh, online and um, a video, and um, just a mommy of three, a single mom of three living in Detroit. Well, you're going to fall in love and someone's going to die, <laughs> like an everyday story in Detroit. I, I always love romance novels, but I, since growing up in Detroit, you get that kind of suspense, uh, urban element. Uh, I had to be true to myself and incorporate that and weave it all together. So I love writing it. I love um, just thinking of stories, and there's so many stories you can write coming from the city of Detroit. Um, I just have fun and just go with it. It's like Zane meets Donald Goins or like? It's more like Zane meets James Patterson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So what got you into writing? Uh, it actually, um, I was my mother uh, when I was six years old. Um, I was lying to her and she just got tired of it. So after, of course, beating me within an inch of my life, she made me write my lie down um, on paper and then come back and tell her the lie. I started doing this repeatedly and found out my lie was better on paper than just telling it and I, you know my pain became my pleasure and I just wanted to write all the time, just all the time. You could write speeches for our government. <laughs> <laughs> I like to go to career day and tell the children I'm a professional liar. I get paid to write lies now. Okay. They always think that's fascinating because storytelling is lying. If you could rename Warren after one person, who would it be? I would name it after Stevie Wonder. Okay, why? Because he is the epitome of no matter what held you back in life, you have no excuse not to do your best and go out there and achieve the best to show that Detroit is the best. My first book was published back in 2000 and it was called Dreams of Reality and it was basically about a woman who finds herself part of an illegal drug experiment implemented by her own doctor um, and she has to figure out if things that she's dreaming is part of the drugs and how to bring this conspiracy to light. Experiment the matrix. Right, and I, I wanted to focus on like how African American women go to the doctor and they don't ask enough questions. You know, they'll say it's a side effect. They, you know, it's okay, just drink some water, it'll pass, you know. But really, something is going on and they don't know how to really tell. So it was uh, where the doctors were focusing on low income women, women who didn't speak up enough, women who were by themselves and didn't know how to talk to their doctor and I wanted to focus on that and bring that to light. Well, it was actually, I got a great reception from it. A lot of people connected with it, um, but at the time, um, I couldn't sell that many copies because I was a newly divorced, happily divorced uh, mother of three and I couldn't afford being an independent publisher to actually go out and paperback publish my books. So I got kind of depressed uh, in that regards and I didn't publish again until 2004 when my mom was like you know you have these stories you need extra money she said you'll find a way Sylvia you always find a way and I just kind of did I found a way to do it low cost still able to feed my family and provide a, a extra income or grussel into the household so it was a grind and a hustle that I could do my 40 hour benefit job, my Gressel, and just keep it going. And it really brought out the entrepreneurship in me, or the authorpreneurship. In me. All right, how have your children reacted to you being an author and writing stories and staying in this creative zone and still being a mother? Well, they actually, I brought them into the fold um, of me writing. Uh, they knew that my writing time was precious and they knew it provided the extra income that they needed in order to put food on a table, get them back and forth to school. So they've been very receptive. I think I have like the most wonderful understanding children ever known to man and I'm blessed that I have them because 
being a single mom of three small children and trying to just get out there and do what you have to do. They're passing out the flyers. They're sitting at the table with me, collecting the money. You know, they even got me to go and get these little trinkets like reading trinkets and bracelets and buttons and they would sell those too. So it was kind of cool getting that spirit in them that we all have to earn an extra income or a drip income or some kind of income and not just be uh, you know, uh, regulated by our benefit job. So that's what it brought to our family. And just being out in the community and showing my love for reading and writing, you know, they got the bug too. So it was like just carrying on that, that tradition of reading and writing through our, our generation, which was very important to me. So I'm glad that. They saw me out there doing it, and I always encourage single parents to do it. I mean, show your kids what you do so that you don't have to say, okay, what are you gonna do when you grow up? They know exactly, they saw, your, they saw their mom hustle, they saw their dad hustle. Well, what can you do? Everyone should have a hustle and show their kids how they hustle.